right, welcome back everyone. This is the Happy Toolbox and this week I want to go over UV mapping inside of Cinema 4D, specifically UV mapping in R25 and higher. So if you're interested in a quick tutorial on how you can UV map and some techniques around that, let's get going. So to kick things off, I'm going to grab a 3D model from our plants pack and I'm just going to start with this seed leaf. I think this is pretty simple geometry we can work with that way I'm not wasting a ton of your time but I can at least show you a couple techniques when it comes to UV mapping and how to get started. So I have my seed leaf here. I'm going to uncheck the hypernerbs. I'm currently in the UV edit layout and that's going to be really helpful when we're doing this. Um, if I select my seed leaf and select all children, you can see I already have UV maps on this because that's how our 3D models come. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these and start from scratch. If I just select all of the UV maps and hit delete, we no longer have UVs here, but we need a UV map to work with. Usually if you're missing any type of UV map, what you can do is you can go down to material tags and set UV from projection. But another really easy way is just generate a cube, hit C to stamp it down, drag that UV map onto your objects and then duplicate it as you go. Cause really it doesn't really matter what the geometry this UV tag comes with. Um, we're gonna be messing around with it anyway. So to start off, let's start with the stem. I'm going to hide everything but the stem. And currently over here on the left hand side, that is what our UVs look like. What you want to do when you're UV mapping things is you want to think about all of these pieces as if they are a piece of paper that is wrapped around to create this piece of geometry and you are trying to lay that piece of paper flat. So in this instance, this is kind of a cylindrical shape and to lay this flat, what we would want to do is we would want to take off this top piece. Take off the bottom piece. So I'm going to highlight those two by hitting UL. I get a loop selection. And then I'm going to highlight one of these sides. So I don't want the whole edge loop on this thing. I just want one side. So now we have one edge selected. And wherever these selections are, basically the UV tool is going to cut that UV map. So basically we'll get some circles that we have at the bottoms and then it's going to cut down the middle of this and flatten this cylindrical object out. So now that I have my UV map selected, I have those edges selected where we want to cut. A way I like to do this is I like to start by going over to projection and just hitting frontal. And that kind of lets us know where our object is, kind of where the camera is looking at it from. And I think that helps Cinema 4D kind of orient itself in a way that it knows how you want to unwrap this. Um, that might be uh, just my own logic I'm putting into Cinema 4D, but that seems to me how it has worked best over the years. Then I wanna go over to Relax UV. And right now I have kind of these settings selected. So pin border points. Um, and if I were to hit apply, I get this little message. Relax UV error, no seams or boundaries are defined in the UV mesh. So it's looking for those seams. And since we added those seams in our edges mode, that's not necessarily inside of our UV map. So you can't really see those edges being defined in there. And so what we wanna do is we want to choose cut selected edge. And if I apply that, it kind of warps itself and wraps around itself. And I don't want that either. And what is causing that is pin border points. So sometimes pin border points is helpful because maybe you select a group of vertices or an edge and you want that to stay exactly where it is, but we don't want that in this case. So I'm going to uncheck pin border points and then right before I hit apply, I'm going to hit auto realign as well. And you can see it unwrapped that, it flattened it out and we got our two circles. So there is the first stem. A trick I also like to do while I'm doing this is if I go over to materials, I'm going to create a new material, new default material. I'm going to apply that to our entire object. I'm going to go into the texture and in surfaces, I'm going to add a checkerboard. And that way I can see kind of like a UV map texture, really quick one inside of Cinema 4D, that things are going accordingly. So you can definitely see a seam here on our object, but you can also see those checkers are laid out really nicely uh, horizontally across, which is exactly what we want. If we go back to our UV map, go to our polys. I can also choose to rotate this with the rotate tool. I can scale it, etc. 
And for now, I'm just going to leave this as is. So let's move on to the pod. I'm gonna turn off our stem, turn on pod one, and you can see right now, if I select the UV, it's kind of wacky. The checkers are really tiny. They don't make a lot of sense. And what we wanna do here is again, think of this as a piece of paper. How do we best want to split this up? And how I would do this is I would hit UL to get an edge loop, go to my edge mode, and I would select just the very far edge on this. And this will probably do the job. I might also put a little split at the bottom here. Might select those two. Just sometimes little cuts like that, especially on rounded shaped objects, um, tend to relax the overall uh, UV map a little bit. So I'm just gonna do that. We're gonna see what happens from there. So. I have, again, my uh, edges selected. I have my UV texture selected. I'm going to go to projection, frontal, there it is. Then I'm going to go over to relax UV, make sure pin border points is off, make sure cut selected edges is on because that is what we are defining and I'm going to hit apply. And there we go. We have our two uh, little split sides going on, which is really nice. If you wanted to keep these together, let's say, you don't want these to like split completely individually. Um, sometimes what I do is I leave one edge connected like this. So I just remove that edge selection and then I hit apply. And now you can see they're actually connected by that piece um, in case you want them to kind of orient the same way, et cetera. And then from there, I'm just gonna do the rest of these really quick to show you the one last tip at the end um, since these are pretty much all the same. Okay, so we have our seed leaf completely UV mapped. If I select the top view of this thing and hit select all children, you can see what our UV map looks like over here. Um, but what we don't want is if you're off laying this to a texture or you're applying some texture with this that has a pattern within it, you don't wanna see this overlap of your UV maps of your whole object. And also you'll notice these leaves are way more massive than the stem itself. And that just doesn't look quite right. So what we wanna do is do something called UV packing. And what this does is it looks at the space your UV maps are laid out in, and it tries to pack them evenly so they are not overlapping. So to do that, I wanna go over to UV packing. I wanna choose geometric. Rasterize creates a targeted resolution. And I don't really wanna do that right now. I don't know if I wanna export my texture at a higher size or anything like that. So I'm going to go to geometric. Since I have my stem kind of going up and down exactly the way it would be in real life, I'm going to choose preserve orientation. So preserve orientation, make sure to keep whatever way you've rotated these objects, because um, sometimes you want your UV maps laid out according to world space or however you specifically you want them to be. So I'm going to check preserve orientation. Then I'm also going to choose equalize island size. And that's the important one. So as I said, our stalk is tiny compared to our leaves, and some of these little pieces of the, you know, the circular pieces are tiny comparatively. So by equalizing island size, islands are any part of the UV map that is separate from one another. So we want to equalize the size between them. So if I hit apply, boom, you get all of these appropriately sized to one another. You can see on our right hand side, you can see that the checker texture is more equalized next to the stalk versus the leaves. And all of these are laid out in a way that you can see every single one of these. So that is a really quick tutorial on how you can do uh, UV mapping inside of Cinema 4D using some of the newer tools, specifically UV packing is a newer piece inside of Cinema 4D R25 and higher. Uh, hope that helps. If you want me to do an even more complex in-depth model, let me know in the comment section below. If you would subscribe to the channel and give this video a like, that would help me out a lot. And as always, if you're interested in any 3D models, including this plants pack, head on over to thehappytoolbox.com. All right, I'll see you next time.